Are you looking for a high quality, sharp, excellent feeling longsword for under $400? Check out the Belor Arms Italian Longsword by Cult of Athena. Welcome back, everybody. What if I told you you could get an amazing longsword that cuts well, feels good in the hands, actually feels like a dream, and it comes with a scabbard for under $400? Cult of Athena was nice enough to send us one of their longswords from their Valor Arms line, which is their house brand of affordable steel cutting swords. Currently, this is made by a manufacturer called LK Chen. And if you don't know who LK Chen is, they've been blowing up in the sword world for the last few years and they make excellent reproductions because the owner of LK Chen is actually a martial artist and a historian. He really does a lot of research on how swords are supposed to feel and is somehow pumping them out for a great price and of very good quality. Now, because I teach longsword for our club, I wanted to get my hands on their line of longswords because they're relatively affordable. I think the most expensive they, one they have is maybe touching 450, something like that. Currently, Balor Arms has a line of longswords that range from this extremely agile and light Italian style longsword to a medium German longsword and they even have a Principe-like Alexandria longsword that I assume is going to be very, very good at cutting. Um, so long as the edge geometry and the sharpness is good. But today we're going to be talking about their lightest offering, and this is their Italian longsword. Cult of Athena did send us this longsword free of charge, but I am going to do everything in my power to remain as unbiased as possible because I believe that the community at large is really what makes these products get better and better. And if you know anything about LK Chen, the manufacturer, they do a great job of listening to customers and improving their products. So for the price that they're offering this for and the amount of feedback that they actually take into account to improve their product, already starting off really, really good. Now a little bit about this sword. It is a Type 18, it looks like Type 18B from what I can see, very similar to the other long swords I've reviewed, but the blade is a little bit, I would say more slender than, uh, than the other swords that I've reviewed from Dark Sword Armory. The tip and the blade are very well formed and the grind lines are extremely even. I didn't see any deviation from the center ridge. The quillons itself are a really nice upturned style and it makes it so it doesn't dig into the arm. The only blemish that I found on this blade was where the grip was wrapped near the top. It comes in at 2.6 pounds on my scale. It has got to be the floatiest longsword I have ever held. And you can really feel that by how easy it is to hold one-handed. And I'm holding it with like two fingers right now and I feel like no strain on the wrist, right? It is so easy to maneuver. We're gonna get into handling in just a bit, but I just have to show you, it's, it's so controllable, right? Now, I haven't cut with this yet, but we are gonna be cutting in this review. I assume that it may have a hard time going through some harder targets because of how light it is. But you know what? I have been wrong before and I'm hoping that this sword proves me wrong. It feels like a more thrust centric blade because of how uh, light the blade is. Almost like a side sword blade that's just a little bit longer than a side sword. But again, I've been wrong before and LK Chen has made other very thin rapier style blades that cut amazingly well. So this, this could cut extremely well and I just don't know it. But you can usually tell if something's gonna cut well by how much authority it has in the cut and uh, how unfortunately front heavy some of these swords are. This is not a front heavy sword and in fact, the point of balance is very, very close. Very close. Let's see if I can get it balanced in. But that's like an inch and a quarter from the cross guard. So the last long sword that I reviewed was about five inches from the cross guard. So we're looking at like about right, right there. And that is also pretty normal for European swords. If you look at historical examples in museums, the point of balance can be anywhere from here all the way up to five to six inches. And that's completely normal. Every sword has a purpose, even if it's the same shape, even if it's two long swords, 
There's long swords that are geared more towards thrusting, depending on who ordered it or uh, what kind of soldier was wielding it. And there are definitely more cut-centric swords that are going to have uh, cut-centric long swords that are gonna have a little bit more weight up here because maybe they're meant for armored combat, maybe they were meant for uh, cutting through a specific type of armor. But swords like this one, this is again before I've cut with it, this seems like a sword that would be amazing for unarmored combat, something you would carry around town. This doesn't seem like a more battlefield or oriented sword and you can feel that by how much this flexes. So I don't have a scale that can show me exactly how much this flexes, but compared to the other long swords that I've reviewed, the Italian long sword in the Balor Arms line does flex a little bit more than I'm used to. This is, uh, in fact, let's go ahead and see if it flexes anywhere near what a fetish work does. So what I have in my hands is a VB Sword Shop Techniques Fetter, which is about the same width as a real long sword, but it's flexible for sparring. And we use these all the time. They're very safe to fight with. They're very uh, safe to thrust with. The Italian long sword by Velo Arms is pretty much the same flex, which is very new to me because most sharp long swords are gonna be stiffer than their training counterparts. However, I have a feeling because of how acute the tip is and how sharp the edges are that this is still going to thrust very well. This is just going to be a much lighter and thinner blade than other long swords that I've reviewed in the past. Now, another reason why I think the sword presents such a good value for the HEMA practitioner is it comes with a scabbard for that price of under $400. The scabbard is wood cord. It's not floppy, it's rigid, and it comes with a shape. And the one I have, it came okay finished, right? This is not gonna be a mirror polish. This is not going to have a uh, very shiny, see yourself in the reflection kind of finish, but that's okay, this is under $400, and even the blade itself is a satin finish, which, I'll be honest, I prefer this finish. This looks less like a decorative sword. I think swords that have mirror polishes sometimes have a very decorative look to them, even if they are very functional, but these satin finishes seem like this is a tool for fighting, and that's my own personal take. I think a lot of people really like shiny swords, and I understand why. There is, a little bit of rattle, a little bit of play, right? The sword does not retain. If I dump this upside down, this sword is going to fall out, but because I suspend this sword on my hip, like this typically, I don't think that this sword's gonna fall out unless you are bending down and you don't have a good suspension system. Like if you're using a, uh, if you're using a sword frog, it's probably gonna hold it in the place at this angle so you can bend down and it's not gonna fall. But if you don't have something like that and your sword does tip, this has a chance of falling out and you grabbing the blade and cutting your hands. So just keep in mind that this is not going to be a friction fitted sword to the scabbard. Even if I reverse it and go the other way, you're still gonna have a little bit of play. Now it's not enough play to make me worry. It's just enough play to know that this is not a uh, fitted to the sword kind of scabbard. They probably mass produce these to some degree, but the stitching, Looks very good. 
the spaces for the tie-offs for your, uh, subs uh, your suspension system on your belt. They look very, very good and well-formed. And everything on the sword looks fantastic. There are some rough spots that we're gonna get to in a bit on some things that I think could be improved upon, but again, you're asking a lot for a 400 and below sword because I think at the time of me receiving this sword, you could get certain versions of it, such as a blemish version or a munitions grade, I think for even cheaper than that. So again, so far, really good value. Let's talk about sharpness. This sword came remarkably sharp for a sword that I thought was probably gonna come somewhat dull. In the past, I've read that Cult of Athena has a subpar sharpening service, right? And I'm thinking that these swords actually come sharpened from LK Chen because I do not see a secondary bevel on this sword at all. And even my Dark Sword Armory swords that I reviewed came with a slight secondary bevel. This looks like a single geometry bevel going down to the edge, which is super impressive for the price you're paying. Once again, sub $400 and you have good ge edge geometry. That's pretty awesome. And again, the sharpness seems impressive. We're going to do a little paper cut test to see how sharp it actually is, but already out of the box, I'm pretty impressed. And it is sharp evenly all the way to the tip down to the Ricasso. I'm not really feeling any deviation in uh, the actual sharpness. So let's try this paper cut and see if um, if it goes through. Okay, that's better than I thought it'd be. Got a little hang up at the end. Let's try it over on this side. Okay, all the way up until that last spot, that might have been uh, a little bit of, uh, maybe it's not sharp near the end. Let's try over here real quick. Oop, tore that one. Okay, that one cut pretty evenly. So I, it might be me, it might be the leverage of where I'm holding the sword that uh, we're getting a bit of a tear at the end. It also could just be the leverage of holding the paper. Okay, that did cut pretty smoothly if I went a little bit slower. I would say that this is probably not hair popping sharp, but it is way sharper like it feels dangerous to touch than any of the other European swords I've ever purchased. And again, no ugly secondary bevel. It is one geometric shape, hollow ground all the way down, and then apple seeded towards the end. That's pretty awesome. That is most likely gonna cut better than other swords of its weight that don't have that single geometry. So we're gonna try it out because I have no idea how this is gonna cut. So when we get out to the cutting portion of this test, we're gonna find out. So this is the easiest target, these are the milk jugs, but there's no rigid lines whatsoever. This thing didn't even move. That's nuts. Uh, I've cut multiple times, no problem. The jug didn't even move. Edge alignment is still extremely important with the sword because of its flexibility. If you do not have good edge alignment, it will not cut through targets. <clears throat> This long sword cuts so easily that even one-handed short snap cuts cut through targets with ease. I've never cut with a sword that's so easy to get through targets. It feels like you're going through nothing. Thrusting's where I was actually quite wrong. This sword will go through targets pretty easily, but it doesn't go through as far as my stiffer long swords did, and that's due to the flexibility of the blade itself. 
As always, we do a light amount of torture testing on a 4x4 to see if the edges will roll or deform. So what do I think of the Ballar Arms Italian Longsword? I have never owned a longsword this light, nor have I ever owned a longsword that cuts this well. Those two things usually don't mix. If you have a lighter, more flexible longsword, you can almost expect that it's not gonna cut very well. But I, even when I did my torture test on it, my little light torture test on the uh, blocks of wood, I don't have any rolled or deformed edges. And Granted, if I had pushed it a little harder, we could have seen some different results, but I don't really like to destroy swords. There's better channels out there for that kind of thing. I think that if we were to put this up against something harder like bamboo or mats, maybe we would see some a, a difference in performance, but maybe not because I really thought that this thing was gonna send bottles flying and it didn't. I was able to use very, very light snap cuts with my wrist, which is something that you don't really imagine you're gonna do with a long sword. It cut through like nothing. It's a bottle deleter. I highly recommend this sword and it's, guys, it costs like, it costs less than $400. That's crazy. I have two other long swords that I've tested that did not cut as easily as this did and they were far stiffer swords. If you like sword reviews like this one, please consider subscribing to our channel. We have another Balor Arms sword coming soon, the Shinto Oni Katana, one of our very first katanas we're gonna be reviewing and you won't wanna miss that. We're in the process of filming that right now. It's gonna be awesome. We love that sword so far, but we haven't done a whole lot of testing on it, so we'll see if it performs well. If you guys are into Hema merch, we have an entire line of t-shirts for you to buy from at our website, www.historicalfightingarts.com. I got nothing else for you guys today. Bye. Oh, that's so nice. Holy crap. <laughs> this thing is so light. It's weightless. It feels like this is rapier light. It's very light, nimble. The cross guards aren't poking me in the arms like they normally do. I like it a lot. But the balance is so good. The weight is great. Tip control is basically effortless. I, I feel like I could do rapier techniques with this. What is this thing? And where do I get one? And yes, I can. It's lighter than the rapiers I use for the class. Uh, it, it, I, it feels like a rapier light weapon. It's... I want it. How much was it? And uh, can I can I buy it like somewhere? Cause or is this person making more? Cause I don't have any money now, but I might in the future.